battled the powerful forces of the pro-gun lobby to pass effective gun safety legislation. We've had occasional victories, but on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines, victory has been elusive. That's why today I couldn't be prouder to say that we got it done. Illinois now officially prohibits the sale and distribution of these mass killing machines and rapid fire devices. I'm signing this legislation tonight so that it can take immediate effect and we can end the sale of these weapons of war as soon as possible. This law does not ask current lawful owners of these assault weapons to give up their lawfully acquired guns, but it does require an accounting for the weapons currently in circulation so we know who is responsible for them if they fall into the wrong hands. While the AR-style rifles used in mass shootings like Highland Park have garnered much of the press coverage and infamy, too many mass shootings are committed using handguns altered by uh, something known as a switch to convert a pistol into an automatic weapon. This type of weapon was used to kill two people and wound seven others in the McDonald's shooting in Chicago. The Chicago Police Department recovered nearly 500 of these weapons between 2018 and 2021, and Cook County prosecutors filed more than 500 cases involving machine gun style weapons during that time. But as of today in Illinois, these switches are illegal. Anyone caught with one will be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. It has been a hard fought battle. But we got this done for Highland Park's Kevin and Irina McCarthy, Jackie Sundheim, Catherine Goldstein, Eduardo Uvaldo, Nicholas Toledo, Zaragoza, and Steven Strauss. For Benito Juarez High School's Brandon Perez and Nathan Viegas, two friends just 15 and 14 years old whose bright futures were cut short just last month. We got this done for all the victims, the spouses, the children, parents, friends, and loved ones who are no longer with us, and for those who have survived mass shootings but were injured. Today, we honor them, their trauma, and their loss by preventing others from becoming victims. This critical legislation would not have been possible without the steadfast leadership of House Speaker Chris Welch and Senate President Don Harmon. And I also want to recognize their members, Representative Bob Morgan, Representative, yeah. You're going to have to do that five times. Representative LaShawn Ford. <laughs> Representative Maura Hershauer. <laughs> Senator Jackie Collins. <laughs> and Senator Julie Morrison. all of whom have been champions. I also want to thank the hundreds of activists for gun safety, many of whom came on their own to petition the General Assembly, plus the women and men from Moms Demand Action, Every Town, the Brady Campaign, Protect Illinois Communities, GPAC, and Students Demand Action. This new law was passed because of their passion. 
This assault weapons ban is a step in the right direction to improve safety for Illinois' families and law enforcement, but there's no magic fix, no single law that will end gun violence once and for all. So we must keep fighting, voting, and protesting to ensure that future generations will only have to read about massacres like Highland Park, Sandy Hook, and Uvalde in their history books. It's our burden and our mandate, one that we carry with solemn honor for our children who will grow up in a better and safer world. And with that, it is my great pleasure to introduce once again one of the champions of this legislation, Speaker Chris Welch. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, it truly is an honor and a privilege to be standing here with all of you and our governor, the Senate president, colleagues in the House and Senate, and all of these amazing advocates here tonight. You know, I've been coming to this building for 10 years now, and I got to tell you, I've heard for a long time, when we organize, we win. When we organize, we win. And for many years, for many years, the NRA out-organized us, outspent us, allowed these weapons of mass destruction that belong on battlefields to be in our communities. And for far too long, families have been changed in the blink of an eye. Too many families have lost brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, loved ones, unnecessarily because of the NRA and their grip on politicians all over this country. But volunteers, moms demanded action. Every town, everywhere, people all over this country said, we want to protect our communities. You know, and they didn't settle for anything less. And so we got it done because we organized. We organized and we won. And the people of the great state of Illinois won. This bill is called the Illinois Protect Communities Act for a reason. We do believe it's going to make a significant impact in reducing these weapons on the street. And if it saves just one life, just one, it was successful. But we believe it's going to save many more than that. And so I honestly believe that this is a day that we should all be proud of, because this is why you've elected leaders to come to Springfield and make the types of decisions that we made this is why many of the leaders signed up to come here and do this job. I know it because I know the legislators who put in the work. I know why Bob Morgan is here. I know why Moore Hershauer is here. I know why LaShawn Ford and Kathy Willis and Denise Wang Stoneback and all of the common sense gun advocates in the House and in the Senate sign up for this job. And it's for a historic day like today. I shared earlier that I didn't know that this would happen today. And I certainly didn't know that my mom would be here for the passage of this historic legislation. Well, what an amazing, awesome honor it is to have her here to witness the great work that we get to do for the people of Illinois. You know, our family was changed by gun violence. But we made it by the grace of God and by leaning on faith. And we put in the work to just help one family. We did that. And I'm so doggone proud of everyone. Thank you, advocates, for what you did. This is just one victory. I'm sure there's many more to come. But today, we celebrate because we won.
It is, it is truly my honor to introduce to you my partner, my friend, the Senate President, Mr. Don Harmon. Good evening, all. I suggested to the governor earlier this evening that we have this signing ceremony in the rotunda. Uh, it was a request that had come to me from an advocate and a Highland Park survivor who's been here for the last few days. But it made immediate sense to me because it's been here in this rotunda that we have had so many rallies over the years for common sense gun laws. And so to begin, I want to thank the tireless advocates who dedicated themselves to this work, many of whom are gun violence survivors themselves. We have wonderful partners all over the country, but I am especially grateful to our, our hometown partner, GPAC, uh, a longtime advocate in this space, the newest and most potent uh, addition to our cause, uh, Protect Illinois Communities, and of course, to the ever-present Moms Demand Action. We would not be here without all of you. I want to thank Speaker Welch, Governor Pritzker, and the Senate Democratic Caucus for their partnership in this effort. I especially want to salute the Senate Democratic members who are here, Senator Maddie Hunter, Senator Robert Peters, Senator Mike Simmons, and uh, calling special attention, Senator Ron Villivallon, who has carried difficult gun bills in the past, and Senator Julie Morris, and Highland Park Senator, who has carried difficult, difficult bills at great personal peril. I salute all of you and thank you for your work. We acted from the beginning of this process with a shared goal, to take meaningful steps towards curbing the unacceptable gun violence on our streets. Gun violence touches every corner of our state on a daily basis. I've spent my entire career working to protect people from it, and sometimes it feels like we haven't even made a dent. But today, with this new law, we begin the pushback against weapons whose only intent is to obliterate other human beings. On July 4th, it was a stark reminder of the horror that these weapons can unleash on a community. On that day, men and women and children gathered to celebrate the country's founding, to celebrate freedom, to enjoy spending time together on a warm summer day. Instead, seven people lost their lives and dozens were injured, and more psychologically so, as someone unleashed weapons of war on the Highland Park Fourth of July Parade. The proliferation and ready access to these high-powered weapons that have an original basis in military and combat have no place in common commerce and on our streets. They contribute to the everyday violence that is unfortunately becoming commonplace. A week does not go by without a shooting in the district I represent, and I know my colleagues can say the same. In fact, I often say every weekend there are mass shooting casualties in and around the district I represent, but we don't pay as much attention to them for among other reasons, because they happen at different times to different people on different corners with different guns. But the pain is the same. This law is an effort that will not solve the problem, and we don't pretend that it will. But it's an additional tool to curb the flow of firearms into our communities, an additional step in the ongoing effort that so many of us are waging to make, make our state truly secure and safe. This law sends the message that we have not grown numb to the horror and that the cries for action after East Mass shooting will not go unanswered. This message sends, this sends the message that reason and common sense can prevail. It's my privilege to introduce a great champion on the issue, Governor Pritzker's partner, our Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton, and I use she, her pronouns. Thank you, President Harmon, for that warm introduction. I would also like to commend you, Speaker Welch, and the lawmakers of the General Assembly for your courage, compassionate leadership, and collaboration that led to the passage of this historic legislation that will save lives. And can we pause for a moment just to acknowledge our great governor, Governor J.B. Pritzker. Governor, you have prioritized making all Illinoisans safe. 
You dug in and inspired active change that now protects communities in every zip code. And as someone coming from a family directly impacted by gun violence, for this we are grateful. I would also like to thank the advocates and the brave survivors of gun violence for standing up and fighting for all communities to have the right to live, work, and be safe. We all know that living free from gun violence makes everything else possible. To educate our children, we need them to be safe. To attract new businesses and expand economic opportunity in our communities, we need those communities to be safe. To be our best selves, both physically and mentally, we need to be safe because the trauma of gun violence and even living with the threat of gun violence inevitably takes its toll. The pain is real. The time is now. We stand together here to say enough is enough because the students, yes, enough is enough. Because the students, families and educators of Benito Juarez High School in the Pilsen neighborhood of Ch in Chicago, who are mourning after last month's mass shooting. They deserve action. We stand here for the people of Highland Park who deserve our support and our voices as they continue the long road of healing after the immense grief that they experienced during the July 4th mass shooting. Today, we come together to mark the passage of the Protect Illinois Communities Act because there have been too many mass shootings to count, too many lives lost, and we will not accept this as normal. For too long, this epidemic has been able to grow and this bill will stop the spread. It is comprehensive in its ban of assault weapons, including devices that could increase the firing rate of a gun and turn it into a mass killing machine. We are making history today. And this great step forward only drives us to continue focusing on the comprehensive steps we can take to ensure every community can live healthy, safe, and well. And with that, I am thrilled to invite Governor Pritzker back to the lectern, or to the table, really, to sign this bill into law.
Happy to take questions. Yes, Dave. President Harmon. President Harmon. Thank you, Well, I like the bill very much. My job was to pass it through the Senate, and that's a process. And I'm very pleased that we all came together around our shared values and passed what I think is the strongest assault weapons ban in the country. I, I did not dislike the bill. My job is to try to pass that through the Senate. And I needed the partnership of the Speaker and the Governor to make that happen, and we got it done. Mark. Well, you don't get to choose which laws you comply with in the state of Illinois. Let's be clear. The fact, the fact is that, yes, there are, of course, people who are trying to politically grandstand, uh, who want to make a name for themselves by claiming that they will not comply. But the reality is that the state police is responsible for enforcement, as are all law enforcement all across this state. And they will, in fact, do their job, or they won't be in their job. Let me just get, sorry, let me just, yeah, get Tina and I'll get you, yeah. You know, getting something complicated and major done often requires some compromise and working with people. Um, it's not, it's never uh, perfect what comes out of a legislative process. I think all of the folks in the legislature behind me would say that. Um, but this is one of truly the strongest and best assault weapons bans in the entire country. And so the result, I think, shows that there was a willingness to compromise, but also a determination to get something major done. Uh, sorry, let me get one over here and I'll catch you, I promise. Thank you. Well, I, I think that frankly, that uh, the Senate president was simply acknowledging what uh, all of the Republicans seem to have been saying, and certainly the uh, NRA and the other groups uh, that were opposed to this, that they're going to try to take this to court. So, um, you know, my reaction, of course, is this is a constitutional bill. The law here that we uh, now have enacted uh, is constitutional. There was a lot of thought that went into it to make sure that it would be. And obviously, things will go through the courts and they'll make their determinations, but I feel very confident. Yep, Amanda. Well, remember that anybody who doesn't comply, there are consequences for that. Uh, so, you know, we've, we've given people, I think, a year, we're at a, about a year, right, for people to comply, to, to fill out the paperwork and so on, and, and we expect them to do that. They are actually, there's a provision, maybe I should ask Representative Morgan to come up and talk about that provision, but they are allowed to, um, to ship those goods to other states where it's legal and to sell them. But go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Representative. Hello, uh, State Representative Bob Morgan. Uh, that's correct. Uh, the uh, retailers that have some of these firearms or this, this ammunition, they will be allowed to sell to other states or to those or a number of provisions of continued sale, for instance, to active duty law enforcement that retailers will be able to continue to sell.
Well, long ago was the time that we should have gotten this done. Uh, but as I've said for many months now, since the July 4th shooting in Highland Park, uh, there is a very powerful lobby in the state of Illinois that has prevented uh, passage of a bill like this. And it took a lot of strength and gumption and uh, understanding and willingness to uh, stand up to very powerful forces to for, for the people behind me who are in the legislature and, and their colleagues to, to finally get this done. And, um, you know, it takes a, a, you know, people who care deeply about uh, keeping people safe from gun violence uh, who are in the General Assembly and who uh, occupy the governor's office together to, to get something like this passed. And then finally, we've seen too many mass shootings in a, such a very, very short period of time. And it's been happening for a long time, but I think now people are paying very close attention uh, because it's not just, you know, the ones that happen in Highland Park uh, and communities like that, but also we know that it's happening every week in the west side, south side of Chicago and in communities that often are forgotten. And um, so I'm very proud of the legislature for the work that they did and all of us working together to get truly one of the best bills in the country passed. As I spoke on the House floor yesterday, the six-month anniversary was a very, very difficult uh, moment for, for my community as there are those who are still recovering from not just the trauma, but their, literally their physical recovery of their, their wounds. And so this is incredibly important because our community was focused on making sure no other community experienced what we did. That really is the focus of Highland Park and our, when we say Highland Park strong, what we mean is we don't want anyone else to go through what we did. And so it's very, very powerful and moving for us to know that we're gonna take one step forward to reduce the likelihood that other communities will experience what we did. Well, I think you, you heard me say a little bit earlier that there's no magic fix to the problem of gun violence, and it's something we're going to have to consistently work at. But I can guarantee you that the work that was done uh, on this bill, the law that is now in place, will save lives. And it won't just be one life, it will be hundreds or potentially thousands of lives. And I'm, I'm grateful that people cared enough to get this done now because going forward, we will see a reduction of gun violence as a result of this bill. Well, there's an, I think I'll let Representative Morgan talk about the effort to talk to gun, to uh, the gun dealers across the state and make sure that they're uh, complying and also uh, aware of what the law is. But um, you asked me whether it's the, the most meaningful piece of legislation. That's, it's a hard question to answer. I can tell you that it means an awful lot to families all across the state. And that, you know, I, I can't compare it to the legislation that we passed to expand health care coverage for people, uh, to make sure that people are able to get insulin who won't live if they don't, aren't able to afford insulin. It's hard to, to compare these things. What I can tell you is that the tragedies that people experience are felt by all of us who care deeply about the gun violence that's occurring across the state and reducing it in any way we can. This will save lives.
Well, I've already begun that effort. Um, in fact, I went with the mayor of Highland Park and the commander of the Highland Park Police uh, to Washington for the signing of a uh, bill to reduce uh, gun violence. And uh, this was back uh, four or five months ago. Uh, and we sat down, just the four of us, the President of the United States, the Mayor of Highland Park, the Commander of the Police there, and me, and we talked to the President directly about that. Um, I've had countless conversations with members of our delegation as well as uh, the rest of members of Congress that I know uh, about getting something passed in Washington, D.C. I, I said it uh, yesterday, I think, in my inaugural address that uh, even after we get this done here, which we just did, uh, and become the ninth state, that we now need Washington, D.C., and the Congress to step up and get it done for the entire country. With your conversations with the president about that ban in more states, do you need 10, 11, 12 in order for the federal government to do something it shouldn't have to be that way, but you know, we, unfortunately, there are uh, pro NRA governors in at least half the states in the country. Uh, there are pro uh, NRA uh, legislators in the House of Representatives, which is now in the hands of those pro NRA legislators, uh, and of course, almost half of the United States Senate. So. Um, I, I don't know what it's going to take for them to move on it. What I know is that I'm going to do everything I can now and going forward to make sure that the Congress passes an assault weapons ban. It worked in the 90s. It worked. The statistics don't lie. So why won't they pass it now? It's because of the gun lobby. That's the reason. Well, we've shown that you can overcome the gun lobby. We've shown that here in Illinois. We can do that nationally, too. I'm going to bring Representative Morgan back because he really did lead this effort, and he himself is a practicing attorney. Although I'm an attorney, I'll let him answer your question. I feel as though I'm being set up. <laughs> um, the, the constitutional interpretation of the Second Amendment, of course, loomed large over the, the drafting of this legislation. Both chambers took that very seriously. We have to make sure that we're passing laws that will withstand scrutiny. So we took those things into account and of course there were a lot of legal threats that came and we look forward to being able to make our arguments in court. Chair. You, you may be surprised to know, I actually do talk about this all the time with people outside of the state of Illinois, but yes, of course, when I, for example, there's a National Governors Association meeting in February that I'll be at, I'll be talking to members. It's a, this is often a one-on-one -on -one, uh, kind of discussion, and yes, there are, you know, 535 members of Congress and 50 governors, uh, but, uh, but it is that personal connection with people and talking to them about what's possible in their states that they can get done that, that I think moves the ball. So I'll, I'll continue to do that. Uh, and um, I, I think I, you know about me that I sort of never stop working. Uh, and I do think that uh, on a national level, people ought to follow our lead. 